update because it doesn't work. Um, so we're here to show you how to fix this. So the first thing you need um, are some of the basic tools. Okay, so we have uh, a set of plastic prying tools here, uh, which you can get uh, at any hardware store where you live. Because uh, here in Malaysia, we can get this uh, this particular set from Mr. DIY, right? Okay, and then um, the next thing you need is a uh, is a test pen. Okay, followed by a um, a wrench key. This is size 20. size twenty. And um, you also need uh, another one which is uh, size 30 here. Okay. Um, and, and this one, this one has a, a flower pattern as, a, as opposed to a hex, hexagonal um, uh, um, head. Okay. And you also need a wrench. Um, the wrench size for, for this is size 10. size 10. It's a 10 mm wrench. Okay. So you have uh, the problem here and the tools that you need to uh, get this fixed. Okay. So to get um, to get the cover of the door off, um, there's basically uh, one location here which requires a T30 screw, right? So to get this thing off, um, you need to use a test pen and pry this little round cover off, which uh, is done this way. You put it in at the top, okay, poke it in and take this thing out. Okay, so this one is the T30. And then there are four other screws which are located here. One. Two, two, um, three, and um, four, right? Four, okay, four, right here. So um, basically, there are, there are four screws here, which uses the T twenty uh, size um, uh, head. Okay, so you remove it this way. Okay, so basically, these are the five screws um, that we have just taken out. Um, you'll notice that this one. Uh, the one which is the skinniest has the finest thread and this is the one that actually goes in the door handle right here um, the other three the other three goes um, around the perimeter the sides which is uh, here and uh, the other two goes here okay so the three screws here <coughs> and the big screw here goes into the one in, uh, at the door hand handle okay Okay, uh, now uh, the next thing you need to do is uh, to remove this uh, plastic patch. Be careful, be careful okay. not to break. Alright, so it doesn't break, just uh, just be a little bit careful. It's got an anchor here. Alright, you have to remove this. And then the next thing you have to do is to take um, this uh, prying tool, uh, uh, the, pry the prying tool which we have over here, um, put it underneath here. Okay. Put it underneath here and then um, remove uh, remove the door handle. Okay. Okay. So um, basically, what you have to do next is to stick um, the the smaller pry into the door, followed by a bigger a bigger pry, and then um, run it run it through the edges. Okay. Uh, where you need to uh, use some force. Uh, don't be afraid. You hear this loud uh, cracking sound, but uh, it's actually. Um, needed to uh, to get the, uh, the the cover open. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. You can stick your hand inside uh, once there's space, and then um, you can uh, remove the uh, the door panel altogether. Okay. Just okay. be careful of the the handle there. Okay. It's got um, a socket which you've got to uh, remove. Um, just like this okay okay once you've got that removed the the whole door panel comes uh, comes open okay you need to uh, remove the other side as well just uh, slot it in in the gap okay slot it in and uh, there we go the whole door panel comes apart Okay, so this is basically what uh, the, the door panel looks like from the back. These are all the, uh, the, the location of the clips. Okay. Like these. Okay. Seven of them. There, there are actually about seven to, to, uh, to eight of them. Seven. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, basically what the, the door, the inside of the, uh, the door looks like after having uh, taken out the cover. Okay, it looks like this. Okay, and inside, 
all right after having removed the um, the, the panel you will see this uh, foam like material which is stuck onto the uh, door panel itself okay what you need to do is to get a, a blade and gently cut through the uh, the glue that's behind this foam like material okay you cut um, from the top right the edge all the way down all the way down to the bottom okay till here till right here okay okay so this is what it looks like after uh, having cut through the back of the foam um, it, it's got this uh, gluey sticky stuff at the back okay and it runs all the way down to the bottom um, just like that okay and at the back if you look inside, um, the power window mechanism is uh, located at the back over there and it is secured by four screws. Okay, that's one there, one, um, two, three and four. So you need to remove do uh, those and uh, access the, uh, the mechanism, okay? And we will get back to you in just a short while after we remove the screws. Okay, so um, here we are. Uh, we've come to a tricky part, okay, uh, where we have to let you know that um, out of the four screws, one, two, uh, three, four, two at the top and two at the bottom, okay, we haven't, we have just removed uh, the screw at the top here, and we are now going to remove the screw at the bottom, okay, because um, the, the motor right now is located right here and you can't really see it at the moment so uh, it's good to have uh, a friend nearby so that he can actually uh, hold the window as we uh, slowly try to bring it down okay so it's very important to note um, that you shouldn't stress the window too much because you don't want to have it uh, broken okay so what you do is you stick your hand inside Carefully, carefully bring down the, the window as you can see it, it's coming down at the moment okay and, and right there this okay one. so there there you can see um, that's the first glimpse of the motor right there okay okay so the next part of this is uh, we actually just want to explain to you um, that that you need to actually push into that gray vertical thingy here push it in inwards okay um, that would actually dislodge um, the top part of uh, uh, the thing over there okay so that the window can come down slowly okay and then if you uh, were to look inside um, at the motor okay you will actually see three screws uh, one there and two at the top right two at the bottom two at the bottom uh, okay and two at the bottom one at the top and you actually need um, a T15 yeah, you, you need a T15 uh, a screwdriver to uh, remove the, the three screws uh, which you can see here, one at the top and uh, two at the bottom, okay? So that, that's what you need to do. Okay. Here has just removed uh, the screw at uh, the bottom right. Uh, he's going to remove the one at the bottom left now. Okay, uh, be very careful. Okay, so that's uh, that's two. Okay, and now he's uh, going to do the one at the top. Okay, which we uh, showed you just now. Pull the motor up too. Okay, and and what you need to do next is to slowly remove the motor. Okay. Okay, and there we go. So the motor looks like that after being dislodged. Okay, looks like this. Okay, and. And, and the inside looks like that okay after the motor has been taken out okay so after having uh, dislodged the motor what you're going to do right now is to get a uh, a multimeter handy okay and and we're going to test the, the power supply to the motor like so you also need to reattach the uh, the power window switch to get this done uh, it's going to test the uh, the power point like so okay and uh, this is the meter reading 
case got a meter reading of uh, 10.1 okay which means that there's actually power getting to the uh, to the motor right now and you have to do this uh, with the car being turned on yeah okay uh, now that we have tested that there's actually power getting to the motor and it's now stuck um, because it doesn't turn okay if it's now going to uh, remove the motor by uh, uh, dismantling the, the socket okay like so and then we are going to bring uh, the motor in uh, to show you guys how to fix uh, the motor which is uh, stuck now because uh, as, as it was just now it was actually stuck uh, couldn't be uh, the shaft couldn't turn at all so uh, what you have to do is to make sure that the, uh, the, the brushes there's actually one on each side uh, like so all right uh, you have to make sure that they are actually free and not locked up okay and uh, what, you, what you can do is actually get some uh, WD-40 okay and uh, spray it at the sides like so okay and and then um, and then use a, a, a pair of pliers and slowly carefully make sure that the shaft is able to turn okay and uh, what, what can actually help you is also to get uh, uh, a contact cleaner okay spray it right in <coughs> excuse me on uh, both sides okay that helps to clean uh, the dirt and also get the uh, the lubrication inside okay and uh, and very slowly after a couple of tries uh, be be patient because uh, we actually spent like about 20 minutes to get this done uh, to get this the shaft actually turning like that because just now it was totally stuck and uh, couldn't turn at all right and be able to turn by hand. yeah so at the end of uh, a couple of tries uh, it, this took us actually 20 minutes to do you should be able to turn the shaft by hand and then when you turn it over uh, the contact cleaner actually removes quite a bit of rust and dirt from the motor okay so um, expect to spend some time doing this and once that is done and when the shaft can turn very uh, very easily okay you take the motor and then stick it back into the socket like so okay and then you can actually press the uh, uh, the switch at the door handle and you can actually see uh, the, the motor turn like so okay then you know that um, the motor is actually working and then you can slowly start to reassemble uh, everything and put everything back in place okay uh, you have to next for safety uh, remove the socket for the door switch again okay like so and then um, stick the motor back in no no pull down and, and also uh, pull down the uh, the bracket which holds the motor a little bit lower so that it the helps glass. you to uh, the glass goes down a bit. yeah and, and the glass will go down a little bit more yeah. okay and it will help you to actually um, stick the motor back into its uh, bracket and the installation of the motor would be the exact opposite of uh, what it was like to take it out just now so you have to slot it back into the bracket uh, put the screws back in okay and um, and work backwards all right uh, what happens is that uh, you uh, you might face a little bit of difficulty doing this at first because um, as the shaft goes into the bracket you might need to uh, move the window up a little bit with the uh, help of uh, a friend so that the uh, uh, the spiral catch catches onto the, the teeth um, and, and that, that ensures that, that the whole motor gets into the bracket fully okay so just a little uh, tip for you there okay and uh, and once the, the motor is fully in okay um, like so uh, you can just go ahead and uh, put the screws back in which uh, we uh, took out just now okay okay so now that the three screws um, have been put back in place okay like so uh, what happens next is you're going to have to like push the lever up okay the one in the middle right now push the lever back up so that the uh, so that the uh, screws which we took out just now from the top can be uh, put back in okay so the window has has got to be pushed all the way back up okay so the uh, the screws can be properly aligned to be uh, put back in okay so once uh, once you have uh, pushed up the lever for the frame um, up okay so the um, the body for the screw comes out um, from the inside and all you need to do is just to put the screws back um, back in Okay, 
like so. Okay, for, for safety reasons, okay, just uh, just ensure that you can only put the uh, window switch back on into its socket after the uh, the nuts have been uh, uh, screwed back on. Okay, so this is for safety reason and to ensure that the glass uh, the glass uh, doesn't break. So it's working right now, as you can see. Okay, so after you uh, have made sure that all the night the, the nuts have been uh, put securely back on, uh, just make sure that they are nice and tight. Okay, like so. Okay, uh, you can actually just uh, firmly press back on to the uh, into the uh, foam covering here. Okay, because uh, the uh, the glue is actually still still working. Take this out. Okay, take out the uh, the switch for the uh, the window. Okay, and then we're gonna show you how to put back the uh, the cover in a short while. Okay, so we are, we are nearing the end of the video, and we're gonna actually show you how to put the uh, door handle back. First, you put the uh, the door handle through uh, the, the opening right there at the top, and also not forgetting the uh, the other the other switch, the wiring for the. Uh, the, the window switch okay which goes in there okay have them securely through the openings and and then slowly put the uh, the door back from the top uh, make sure that all the clips are aligned so that they can easily go back in and all you need to do is some force is uh, needed to get this thing done okay now that the uh, the door panel is back on the next thing you have to do is to make sure that the uh, window switch is uh, connected like so and then uh, slowly place back and also the door handle like that okay and then um, we're going to have to put back um, the screws uh, which we uh, took out just now uh, the position of the screws would be two at the bottom okay over there like so okay uh, one one here right here uh, towards the top you'll notice that this one uh, the one which is the skinniest has the finest thread and this is the one that actually goes in the door handle right here and the T30 right uh, okay. there at the end. Five all together. Yeah, so there are five screws all together which you need to put back. Okay, so now that everything is back in place, just to make sure that all the screws are back in place, just make sure that that is uh, put back properly. Um, and also that triangular cover at the top here. Okay, slide it in. Push it all the way in and there you go. That's the video of how you fix a power window fault on a Renault Zoe or any other car for that matter. And if this video has been helpful to you, please don't forget to give us a like, subscribe and also leave a comment if there's anything we can help you with. Alright, thank you very much.